my name is Brandon Scott. I'm 18 years old and I live in Okinawa, Japan. I've been here for five years, so it's given me the luxury to be around the Japanese cars and the Japanese imports. I've been a car guy since I want to say I was about eight years old. That's when I first started working on cars on my mom's side of the family. They're, they're all like truck guys and they all go four-wheeling and off-roading and stuff. And so they're always breaking stuff or getting stuck. And so I've always just been around like I've been around that influence and I got my first car when I was 17 years old it was a 2000 Subaru Legacy B4 I sold that because my buddy was selling his R32 GTST I put a down payment of $200 T had put an RB25 debt into it it was covered in rust you know Steven was like man I really wonder how much power this thing can put out went for it and it had a really nice pull and then made some not so good sounding noises I took the car back to him, I let him keep the $200. There was a loose ground wire when we first got the car, so I was a little upset that it was only ground wires that caused it because the guy who bought it uh, after me said that it really ran like strong, ran like a champ. I had $1,000 left, I found a silver 1996 uh, Silvia S14. It was sun damaged and you know there's a ding in the front fender. You know, it was just it just looked ugly. So I ended up buying that. Um, after looking at the car I told him I'd give him eight and he said deal and I bought it that day. That was five months ago. So I got my car with P1 racing rims, R thirty three brakes and five lug uh, all around, a triple core radiator and a aftermarket LSD, silver and a automatic. Uh, the mods that I've done today are the D-Max replica hood, the D-Max tail lights, the no-name side skirts that were riveted on by Buggy Customs, the rear origin bumper, the rear zeal function suspension coilovers, the S15 driver seat. I painted it matte black. It took me about eight cans of spray paint. I, I didn't even tape it off. I kind of just got like a cardstock paper and held it over the parts that weren't supposed to be painted. Ready intercooler. It has a Gretti strut bar, pink drift grip, you can see it. And then most important, this 16 inch dildo shift knob. Other than that, um, I've done an engine and tranny swap on this. So I found the car um, by myself. I bought an RB20 debt for 600, 650. And I was going to originally put that engine in my car. I didn't realize that for that to happen, I'd have to weld into the firewall, and cut a bunch of stuff, and it was just too much work to do for a car out here, you know, because I'm only going to have this car for another year. I was going to sell it, and my buddy Mark, he was like, I'll give you 500 for it, and or for the engine, and I was like, what kind of engine do you have in your car? He's like, oh, I have a SR20 debt red top. Just, we could just trade, just clean. He's, he was like, really? I was like, yeah. And so that's what we did. Um, after that, we didn't we didn't even attempt the start until, I want to say three months after that deal was made. And so we finally did the swap. We all met up on a Saturday. We got my engine out two hours. You no, know, my car was ready. My car was sitting in the stall. It was ready to go, ready to have the red top put in. But Mark, Mark got there five hours late, and so we had a really late start on his car. And so his engine didn't get pulled. Like the only thing they did was just unplug the power steering, the AC compressor, and took the belts off. The next day, they he showed up, but he could only show up at four o'clock, and so we'd only work on it for like two hours a day. It took us four days. And then finally, I was like, I'm not going to wait for him. I'm just going to wing it, attempt, see what happens, hope for the best. We, we put the engine in. It took us probably an hour. And we got that engine in. Uh, so we go to hook up the drive shaft. So I got, I bought a, a five-speed drive shaft out of an S14. And it didn't line up. I tried an S13. That didn't, that was too short. What we had to do was we had to get the five-speed drive shaft. And we had to get, we had to get the front of that. And then we had to hook it up to the rear part of automatic drive shaft both for my car my car my car wasn't running for three weeks I was three weeks without a car wiring was just too much of a pain 
I went to Bill at B&M and he said get an S14 turbo ECU, get an S14 turbo harness. So I did that, I got that the next day actually from Jason, I bought that off of him. So all together to get the car running, it took us three weeks. Leaving you alone. So before the engine swap, my car handled beautifully. It had a really good uh, distribution of weight so I could go corners no problem. I love the feel of it, you know, it was probably like the best feeling car I've ever had. It, it got up there, you know, even when it was stock automatic. Um, right now, right now it's running on two cylinders out of the four. It's just not running good, you know, because of engine swap. Sometimes the turbo will kick in, sometimes it doesn't. Like right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go driving in this car hard. Like I, I'm kind of a little sketched out to drive to and from home. So, like handling corners, uh, I haven't, I haven't even tried. I don't, I don't want to get my car up that fast just because I feel like it'll blow up. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with this car. I love this car to death. You know, I, like you really get like a bond with a car that you built yourself. Like if you went out and just, like bought a car and you wrecked it, yeah, you'd, you'd probably be hurt. You know, you'd probably like feel some type of sadness just because it was a nice car, but like for me, like I'd feel even worse because you know I did the work myself or you know, with the help of friends. Future plans for this car? Definitely, well I have a, a new bumper, an origin front bumper, and I have fiberglass wide front fenders and aero rear view mirrors, or side mirrors. Uh, I'm gonna be putting those on within the next couple days. And then after that, I'm going to be painting it all black again, just because the parts that I have, like the bumper and stuff, they're white, so I have to paint it all black again. And then after I do that, my next plan is to get it running how it's supposed to, get it running correctly, strong. Other than that, like, I'm happy with it, I love it, it's a great car. So, my car kind of just broke down, right, it wasn't running right in the first place, my car Finally, it just stopped, stopped turning on. And so, you know, we were looking at some wires because that was the problem in the first place, was wires. So Steven over here, he goes, Brandon, this isn't plugged in. And he, it was half unplugged and he plugs it in. And now we're running on all four cylinders. So now, my car is legit. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed my very first car interview video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button for more videos in the future. Also, thanks to Brandon for letting me check out his car and film it and drive it in the end. If you guys are actually kind of curious as to how the car ran after we fixed it or just want to know what I have to say about it, be sure to click on the video link in the description below. Until next time guys, take it easy.